good evening. I'd like to call this uh, meeting of the Board of Adjustment uh, to order. Can we get the roll, please? Certainly. Um, Jonathan Spencer. Here. Stacy Brady. Present. Lane Kottmeyer. Here. Rebecca Provo. Here. Then absent are Donald, Jenna, and Jack Rychecki. All right, looks like we got a quorum. Um, next item on the agenda is approval of uh, December's minutes. Do we have any comments or questions on those? Any changes? Okay, can we get a pull of the board, please? Spencer? Yes. Brady? Yes. Kottmeyer? Yes. Provo? Yes. All right, next item is um, our public hearing for variance VAR 16-0001 uh, for a four foot variance to the four foot maximum fence height for a front yard fence in the R3 zone district at 6500 South Windermere Street, Littleton, Colorado. Could we have staff? For the record, my name is Pam Hall and I'm a planner with the city of Littleton. I've just presented the board with the exhibits for VAR 16-0001, variance for a four foot maximum fence height for front yard in the R3 zone district. Attached is the application for a variance filed by Donna Fottery, owner of the property located at 6500 South Windermere Street. The applicant is requesting a variance to the four foot maximum height for a front yard fence to, const to construct the six foot fence. Ms. Flattery erected a six foot fence along the front property line of her property for purposes of utilizing a front yard as a dog agility course. Under section 10-4-3 of the zoning code, the maximum height for a fence in the front yard is four feet. <coughs> The house on this property was built in 1920 and the property was annexed into the city in 1956. The present R3 single family residential zone zoning was established as part of creating this home rule city in 1960. The applicant purchased the property in 2007. The Littleton zoning ordinance 10-4-3 requires this maximum uh, fence height of four feet Section 10-111B gives the board authority to grant variances where due to exceptional and extraordinary circumstances, literal enforcement of the provisions of this title will result in unnecessary hardship. No variance can be approved unless the board finds that all of the criteria stated in 10-111B have been met. So assessing the application, um, the first criteria is that the variance would not authorize the operation of use other than those uses specifically listed as primary permitted uses for the zone district which the affected property is located. The requested variance would not allow any other use than the uses permitted in the R3 zone district. Number two, that the variance would not alter the essential character or zone in which the property is located or substantially or permanently impair the allowed use or development of adjacent properties. A six foot fence would alter the character of the neighborhood as most of the homes in the general vicinity of this property either don't have a front yard fence or have a four foot front yard fence. Number three, the variance is the minimum that would afford relief and is the least possible modification of the provision in question. The agility course could be contained in the side yard where a six foot fence is permitted per the zoning code. Alternately, the course could be located in both the side yard and the front yard if the fence height meets the maximum of four foot limit within the front yard. Neither of these options requires relief from the zoning code. Number four, that the variance would not adversely affect 
public health, safety, and welfare. The additional height for the fence would provide protection by keeping the dog contained in the yard. However, there are other possible solutions to obtain the same result. Number five, that the hardship, if any, under which the variance is sought was not created by the owner, occupant, or agent of the owner of the property in question, nor was it suffered as a result of a violation of any provision of this code. It appears that a case has not been made for existing exceptional and extraordinary circumstances on the property that constitutes a hardship. <coughs> the configuration and topography of the lot, together with the location of the existing house and garage, allow for a six foot fence area, albeit a smaller area, that meets the zoning code requirements. For the reasons stated above, city staff concludes that this application for the variance to a four foot maximum height does not meet all the conditions for approval as provided in 10.11.1b. The fence is being requested for a temporary use, but the variance runs with the property and would be in place forever. Staff recommends denial of the variance. Does the board have any questions of staff? No, I don't think okay. so. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Donna Flattery. Thanks, Pam. Please Good state evening. your name and address, please. I'm sorry? Please state your name and address. Donna Flaherty, 6500 South Windermere Street, Littleton, Colorado. Thank you. Um, I retired from the government after 33 years. And at that time, and as a child then, as an adult parent, have always had German Shepherds. So in January, I went to a shelter and found a German Shepherd puppy. Um, I realized when she was about six months old, she would jump. I've had her in obedience training. I have her in Zoom room right now, which is agility training. She's been through three obedience classes and, and we're in agility training right now. So the purpose of the fence was for two purposes. One, to keep the dog in, you know, and as a responsible pet owner, I really felt like the, the fence was necessary. Now, when you see pictures, and I don't, I have some pictures here, the majority of my yard, the house is on a corner lot, okay? The distance between my house and the fence behind me, the next lot, is nine feet straight across the back. So it's a, there is no backyard per se. So I consider my side yard part of that. Um, and I have photos that I can give you all if that's acceptable. Sure. To look right there about that tree. Oh, okay. And this is the side of Windermere and Peachtree. Sure. Thank you. That's the driveway. Okay. So that's just part of my driveway, but that's the corner. That's right here. Can you speak in a microphone, please? This is the other side of the driveway on the house. Okay. Okay. There's where the fence comes off the side, what I consider the side, and across the front. There are um, lilac bushes that, when they bloom, almost completely hide the front of that fence. There's a, a wire fence. Both of the houses, mine and the house next door, were built in 1920. So between me and the house next door, there's like a wire mesh old farm kind of fence that belongs to the other house. That's from looking from the neighbor's yard to the front porch. Again, the fence comes off the side of the porch and just across the one side. 
So my whole, I don't consider that so much to be part of my front yard. You can still access the front, okay, up the sidewalk. I just don't like it. And then this is another of the agility. This is standing at the fence looking towards the back. And there was already a six foot fence, as you can see, across the back that's between my house and the house behind me. Um, when I brought up this issue, when it was brought up to me, um, I was told by planning that there has to be 25 feet from the back of the house to the next house. That's not the case. It's nine feet from the back of my house to that fence. And right behind the fence behind my house is another house. So I don't have the advantage of having that backyard. Um, this is just the fence off of the side of the porch. This is a gate and you can see the backyard, the distance between. When I'm not home, there's a doggy door on the other side so the dog can come out. But if I'm not home, she cannot get around to the front yard. It stops her from being able to come through so that it limits her distance. I don't really want her out in the front when I'm not there. That's the German Shepherd and the Pomeranian. Those are my two dogs. This is the backyard looking from Peak View, which is the side road. And from the, there's a little six foot fence behind the garage. It's a detached garage, so there's a walkway between the house and the garage. This again is the back of the house. And like I said, it's nine feet total from my house to the fence, and you can see the house behind me. And I'm not sure, I was told by the gentleman who lives in the house behind me that he put that house up in the 70s. And as I understand it, the 25 foot variance was put into place in 1960. So I don't understand how this passed for it to be nine foot from the house to the fence and enable that gentleman to put his house up if the, ver if the code went in in 1960. This is the backyard against, again, the garage is this section and the house is the further section. And you can see even where the house jets out a bit. The way the property line runs against that fence, it, com it comes straight down and then it jets a little bit this way and then goes further down. I don't know who, how the lot was divided. And then this That's the final one of the backyard with the two dogs. And like you can see the fence at the end that stops them from being able to go into the front yard when I'm not home. And I have um, signed petitions from most of the neighbors around me. The petition says, the signing of this petition by me, we, for the request of a two foot variance, fence variance in the south yard at 6500 Windermere indicates that I, we, have no objection to the height, location, or aesthetic appearance. The traffic on Windermere Street is heavy throughout most of the day, and though the speed limit is 30 miles per hour, it is not consistently adhered to by most drivers. And I have comments and signatures from, um, did you? Um, there are some comments, I don't know if you can read them, but I even had, um, put one of these out under the sign, the variant sign, and people would stop and sign it. And everyone that I've spoken to, um, really had no objection. As a matter of fact, they felt like I did that I was being a uh, good pet owner to keep the dog from being able to go out of the yard. On my way here, incidentally, on Windermere, 
there's a house. Okay, now, is that considered a four-foot fence? And there's another. And those are relatively close to Littleton Boulevard and um, Windermere. And I think in your packet you should have a, a drawing showing the dimensions. Okay, from my front porch to the street, again, I was told it's supposed to be 25 feet. It's 18. But the issue that I have is I really don't have a front yard except for on the other side of the porch and the side more or less on peak view. That's more or less what I consider my front yard. Um, it was suggested that I put a fence off of this a four or a six foot fence, move it back to next to where the porch is on the house. Okay, so that where the windows are, the six foot fence would come off of the side of the house. The problem is there's a door there and the dog can still get out the door if I were to remove the six foot fence. So my contention is that I don't consider all of that my front yard, but I consider it my side yard. And I don't want to lose the use of that yard because of the fence. Um, I guess the first question I have is, did you get a fence permit to erect that six foot fence? No, what happened was um, the dog went over the four foot fence on the side. Okay, and it really freaked me out because even though she's a shelter dog, um, I have time and money invested in her. And so when it freaked me out, I had a gentleman that came to the house because one of the pig branches off of the tree, off a tree fell on the house. Um, just nice sunny day. Uh, one of my supervisors said she had a gentleman that did tree work. So when that happened, I called him. And, and what I'm being told now is I cannot get the permit until the variance is either approved or disapproved. But um, I did mention the name of the contractor that I used, and I guess he has to be licensed or something in the city of Littleton. Mm -hmm. But since the fence was already up, um, it was beyond the time, and she told, I was told that I would have to just handle it myself, that the contractor wouldn't be involved. Um, frankly, I think that what happened is I got the notice on my door. This notice was put on my door on Christmas Eve. Okay, the fence had already been up like five or six months. And what I'm being told is that a complaint might have been filed because the dog barked when they crossed in front of the fence. I don't know what brought it to the light of the city. Okay, but something had to have done it. But it was like Christmas Eve and I'm getting this notice that so was a little disturbing to me. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, is the six foot, the six foot fence is so the dog doesn't jump over it? Exactly. Well then why don't you need a six foot fence on the side yard? You said that it was escaping that way, so you know, you have a four foot fence there. So that's why I'm curious why you can have a four foot on the side and a six foot on the front. Are you the need only, the only smaller size fence is in the back where they can't come through. And she doesn't seem to. I think because on the front side, if somebody's walking with the dog or somebody strange goes by, mm. it triggers her to, you know, want to jump to see who it is. I have the dog, I'm, a, I'm single, and I have the dog as protection. Well, is, um, on this exhibit, it's, I know it's kind of far, but it says that this is the four-foot fence. Oh, it's, no, that's the distance. 
Okay, across the back is a six there's foot a, fence. Part, there's a black marker and it says location of existing four foot chain link fence. So that's, that's on the side between me and the house next door? Yeah. Yeah, the bushes and everything fill in there so much that she doesn't, she won't bother. She can't really get to it out of that way because it's totally, I mean, remember this house was built in 1920. So most of the trees and the plantings and everything are pretty old and I keep them trimmed, but it, it fills in like now you can see it filling so that she doesn't go through there. I mean, I have one other quick question. Um, a lot of this has been about the dog, but then I do see there's on this, on the petition, um, it talks about traffic and then also in your application. So is it also traffic or is it just the dog? I mean, are you? No, it's no one else, both. Because no one else on Windermere has to have that six foot fence, so they're experiencing the same amount of traffic. So I'm just curious why there are other people saying I need a tall fence for traffic. Well, I mean, I, I understand it. No, and if road. you read the petition, it also states that on the petition. Um, and they agree that the traffic is bad. And actually, I mean, I know it's an emergency access street so that it does get plowed pretty quickly when it snows. Um, but the traffic on the street is terrible. As a matter of fact, when I first got the Pomeranian, he got hit by a car, I didn't have the fence. Um, and there have been other dogs that have been hit and killed. But Windermere is very busy, especially because it's just where you come off of Ridge Road and as they come down that way. And um, actually, the neighbor who lives behind me, um, his wife wrote an article that was put into the Littleton um, newspaper and she called it um, 6,500, or no, she called it the Speedway, Windermere Speedway because of the traffic on there. And I know several of us called and asked them, you know, the police department, if they could please <coughs> monitor that because the school is just beyond me in the next block. And it's amazing how fast people go. Um, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. um, please explain to me again why the suggested alternative of setting the fence back uh, from the street where you would be allowed to have a six foot, you know, back so far from the street. Right. You said something about a door and that's the reason it wouldn't work. On the but porch. I didn't, under I didn't understand. Okay. If you look, there's a front porch, you see where the white fence is, and then there's a side porch. There's a door right in the corner there. So my concern is if she can come out that door and it's four foot, if she can, if she, the one time that she did jump, jump the four foot, if she can jump it on the side, possibly, I don't need her going out the front. And see, my other concern is with a six foot fence, there are two by, there's a two by four that holds the slats. And I intentionally had him leave space between the two by fours so that she could see, okay? Because having worked for the postal service for 33 years, I can tell you that nothing makes a dog crazier than not being able to see and having that letter carrier walk up to the door and rattle the door or rattle a mailbox, whether it's at the door or on the street, every single day. And that's what makes the dogs crazy and that's why letter carriers get bit. Because even though they see them every day, it's, it's just the mentality of the dog that you're on my property and you're rattling whatever, whether it's the mailbox door or the door, I have a door mailbox in the door so it drops into the house. So in looking at this picture, it raises another question for me. Okay. It looks like there's sort of a white railing on that front porch. Is there a white railing on the side of the front porch there? Yes. How, the dog can't get over that? No. Now? Why is that? No, because it's higher up. But she just doesn't. She just, nobody walks on the porch. Her mentality is the front across the front where people can walk down the sidewalk. That's where she gets a little upset. And as a matter of fact, today in the mail, I left it over there, I did get, um, it was suggested by planning <coughs> that I get a shock collar for the dog. And somehow I'm not comfortable with that. I did talk to an <coughs> audiologist about a week ago and asked them if I got that type of device, would it impact, oops, sorry, would it impact the hearing of a dog or have any effect? And she said no. 
And so I actually have it with me. I received it today in the mail from the front porch. So I'm gonna try that. Um, I don't wanna break her spirit though to the point that when she's in the house, if somebody would enter through the night or whatever, that she then has lost the protective nature of the dog. Um, she's a very friendly dog, but when, when other people walk down with their dogs, of course the nature is of a dog is to bark. And I'm not sure that that's what brought it to the attention, I don't know. Well, I just had a clarification. With, with that picture there, it appears to me that you could put, and, and maybe this is a question for staff, where the downspout is coming down, right there by the edge of the patio or the front porch, that's where the six foot fence could start, correct? Correct, yes. Running there is the, Yeah, it would be a parallel line across that very front por portion of the house. So a gate could go where the sidewalk is and six foot fence could go across there. And so that door would, that's the door you say has a doggy door in it or she, the no, dog the can get out? the doggy door on the other side of the house. Oh, okay. Yes. So okay. she can't get out that door that's in the corner. Yes, she can. She oh, can't, she unless, I mean, I have to let her out. Yes, But okay. she cannot get out. Okay. But so essentially that doorway would then be fenced in with a six foot fence if you brought it off at the corner of the front porch. Okay, well, when I talked to planning previously about this, she stated to me that the fence would have to come off the end of the porch. See where the three windows are? The yes. corner there and come across. The southwest corner of the house. Yeah, yes. So, um, staff, what is the setback for the six foot fence? I mean, what quantifies it not being a front yard fence anymore? The definition for front yard fence is the furthest part north of the house, you know, so that you draw an imaginary line from property line to property line, um, if, and that incorporates it. So, it could go off of the corner where the downspout is, or even where we would even consider that little um, covered patio portion. So from the corner of that patio across would be considered the front yard. The, so the, basically the front plane of the house. Correct. And because the address is on Windermere. this side, that's, that's where the fence has to be. Correct. Do we have any other questions? We bought the house in 2007, is yes. that correct? And how old is the dog? Um, one year. Okay. So your request to maintain that six foot fence or to get the variance for the two foot um, is essentially to allow more usable backyard space or to use the front yard as side yards. Right, because technically there's no backyard. Mm -hmm. And in this area too, I don't think. Between the two things that are. So there's that. Yeah. The box that you see, that's my vegetable garden because there's nowhere in the back to put a garden of any size. And that's, yeah, and that shows up on the plan view that you submitted also kind of in between the trees there, it's just. Um, I, I, I have to say that I'm, I'm certainly sympathetic to the issues that you have with your dog. I have a German Shepherd myself, a male, who can be aggressive along fence lines. Um, uh, uh, but I, I, I just, I wanna make sure that you understand that the criteria that we have to meet in order to um, grant a variance, and, and the reason for the restrictions on fences, um, and I, I, I'm I'm not sure that you're um, y you know you have to show a hardship to us, and. I'm just going to interrupt you guys. Don't forget, you also need to do public comment too. So you should have your applicant yeah. present uh, their thing, uh, and then take public comment, and then you can talk about the. And I'm not, I, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to a question for her. Okay. Sorry. Um, uh, but um, so I'm wondering if you can explain to me what you think, what is the hardship that your property is, that's inherent in your property that, um, it, that, 
that you're basing your um, application on? Because basically that is my yard. That's my side and front yard, backyard kind of thing. Cause like I said, there is no backyard. It's a strip, <coughs> a nine foot strip across the back. And I would like to have the use of my yard. Thank you. Do we have any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you. Um, um, now, you don't have copies of all the petitions? Do you? <coughs> we did, did receive you? copies of the petitions. One of them uh, we'd like to enter in the pictures and the petitions as an exhibit to the, okay. to the record of the application. Okay. So I don't know if you make copies or willing to give that to the board or. Okay. I think we had one, but the one she showed us had more signatures on it than the one in our. Correct. Packet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Do we have uh, anybody else signed up to speak in this case? Doesn't appear so. All right. Um, I guess we'll close this part of the public hearing. I think the, the issue here is really just, is there a hardship um, due to the property that would give us a potential to grant a variance for it? Um, personally, I'm also sympathetic to the cause. Um, having the dog and, and being limited um, by living on a corner and having limited backyard space, but I think, you know, the rest of the neighborhood is four foot fence. Um, and, and bringing that out does change it, whether it's extreme or not. I think it still, it still changes the character of the neighborhood. In some way it could set a precedent well, I was just gonna say for that. others to do the same. Um, I, I think the fence on the side or at the corner of where the front porch juts out would still allow much more usable space than that little hallway in the back. Right. Um, there is an alternative. And I, I, I also kind of think feeling. that the hardship was there when she uh, when she bought the house. It, it, I mean, the, the topography of the lot or the layout of it was that way when she bought it. The hardship has been caused after the fact when she got the dog is really the hardship in essence. Mm -hmm. um, that's what changed the f usage after the fact. And a fence permit would have stopped all of it. Right. Yeah, I think exactly where, what you can do and what the rules are prior to building is critical. This, I don't think it meets the criteria. Yeah, I, I think either. the permit was a key to me. Um, you know, we got a, did a six foot cedar fence in our, between our side and our neighbor and we even pulled a permit with City of Littleton even though it was hidden and yeah. just to make sure we're meeting code. And I would, I believe that the pictures that we were shown of other fences along Windermere the four, they were four foot fences as measured from the ground to the top of the fence. Um, I also wonder whether or not there's enough open space in that fence. I think that front yard fences have to have so much of a percent of open space. I know there was a wide, there were wide spaces between those slats, but I'm not, 
I don't the know. The 50% visibility. It's 50%. I don't, I don't think it meets the 50%. Yeah, I don't think it meets that either. I think it's going to have to move it back and then solve both the problems. You'll be able to use that portion of the yard. It's just like any of us with a front yard. That's your front yard. Right. You're not, you, you can't. Uh, an invisible fence might be an alternate if, if that's what you want to do and bury, but I don't think this meets the criteria of a hardship. Yeah, and lots come in all shapes and sizes, and uh, you know everyone has different <coughs> sized yards. And I still believe that side yard, if you move the fence back, is yeah. adequate for a garden and a dog and more usable space. Definitely. Yeah, it, there is space there. It's just an odd configuration. Yeah. Yeah, I think that fence. Well, I haven't done the math, but I think it could be fifty percent visible or transparent. <laughs> but it would have to be taken down to the four foot level. And it could be kept, I think it would be kept at that location as long as it meets that, uh, the height and, the, think so? and the transparency. It, it appears, I, I went by it, I didn't measure it, but it, um, <laughs> it looks like it's a slat and then a slat yeah, space. Yeah, it's a slat. So. Um, and I know the other issue is that they want at least on board member Provo, could you please move closer to the mic? I'm sorry, I, have, I also have a terrible sore throat, so I'm sure I apologize. Not to inspect <laughs> your microphone at the same time. Um, now I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> it's super important. Sorry, that's okay. Um, all right, do we have a motion? Discuss a little bit more. Or? I'll make the motion. Um, I move to deny case number VAR 16-001, request for variance to the four foot maximum fence height at 6500 South Windermere Street, in that the request does not meet all the criteria of section 10-11-1B of the Littleton City Code that are required to exist for the board to grant approval. Denial of this application is based on the following findings of fact. Criterion number two is not met as the proposed, proposed fence will alter the essential character of the neighborhood because the adjacent properties have four foot front yard fences. Criterion number three is not met as there are alternatives that would provide relief without the need for a variance. And criterion number five is not met as the hardship under which this variance is sought was created by the owner. Do we have a second? I second. You pull the board, please. Provo? Aye. Yes. Codmeyer? Uh, yes. Brady? Yes. Spencer? Yes. The motion is unanimous and the <coughs> denial carries. Thank you. Um, do we have any unscheduled uh, appearances this evening? doesn't appear that we do. Um, if not, I'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you.